final um, uh, uh, video about uh, the carnival dice problem. And um, first thing I wanted to talk about is um, you may recall from the third video that I was a little bit um, concerned by the fact that looking at the um, looking at the number of wins of one color versus another, when we were looking at just red versus green, and uh, so we looked at um, um, if red was one and green was three, um, that would mean the green one. If red was one and green is four, green one, and so on, all the way down to red nine and green eight means that red wins. Uh, that when I was looking at red versus green, I had red won five-fourths of the time. Red versus blue, I had blue wins five-fourths of the time. But I had, and when I was looking at blue versus green, I had green wins um, two-thirds of the time. And I, I said that struck me as odd. I was curious as to why it wasn't also five-fourths. And, and um, so looking at it more carefully, um, I... Uh, discovered a mistake. Now, something that sort of confirmed my opinion that uh, that this was wrong is when I was doing the the random simulation that's over on this page right here, I was doing the ram, random simulation and green versus blue, I was getting something that looked more like that five-fourths number, okay, and not like a two-to-one number. So I thought, yeah, there's something wrong. And I discovered what was wrong is that I have this. I have blue, two, six, seven, green is three, four, eight. And then I repeat it again, two, six, seven, and three, four, eight, two, six, seven, and three, four, eight. So I was just writing the same three cases over and over again. When what I really want to have here is I want to have this is two, this is two, this is two, this is six, this is six, this is six, and then this is seven, and this is seven, and then this is seven. And when I have this, then that gives me all possible combinations between blue and green, and then I have the five-fourths number like I thought uh, I should have. Something else. When I finished up, now I'm, I'm sorry I actually went through it and did this before uh, going on to the video. Um, but I'll see if I can explain it. Uh, when I finished up, I had the the uh, the uh, the words here: blue, green, red, were just all written in black text. I really wanted to find a way to color the text to match the color. Okay. Now, uh, so I didn't. I've never done that before on Excel, and uh, I uh, uh, searched around for it with a little Google, and I found that. It's done with something that's sort of like a conditional formatting. And um, on uh, my 2008 Mac uh, Excel, conditional formatting is under this format sheet. And in other versions of Excel, you have to look if they, they move things around, as I've complained before, and they're in different drop-down menus. So you have to find that conditional formatting menu. So what I do is I want to do conditional formatting, and I'll click on the cell I want to format here. Here's the cell. And then I uh, go to format, conditional format. And, and the only thing that shows up in the beginning is this. It's called condition one. Okay, now this is the, the table that shows up with my version of Excel. And I'm sure in other versions it's something similar. So condition one, I say when the cell value is exactly equal to and that's equal to the word or the 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 uh, the text uh, sequence uh, B L U E. So this word B L U E with parentheses around it. When the cell value is equal to blue, then I go in here. When I click on Format, it gives me options of changing the font, of changing the representation of the font, whether it's bold or underlined, changing the color, and so on. And the only thing I changed is the color to blue. Okay, so that's how I did that. Then if the text says green, I do the same thing. Cell value is equal to, now you have choices, the formula or the cell value. 
I pick cell value. And you have choices here, uh, between, not between, equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, and so on. I want it to be exactly equal to um, the string G-R-E-E-N, green. And then I go into format and I pick the color green. Okay, I do the same thing down here, cell value equal to red, and I pick a red font. Oh, so when I do that, this is conditional formatting. So I have, um, uh, and then I click OK. Now, when I actually did this, it kind of screwed up some of these values up here, B3, D3. So these somehow change, which is the uh, one of the, the magics of Excel that I found is sometimes I do things and uh, unexpected changes occur. And I, so I had to fix up, get, go back and fix these up because I was getting that, uh, I was getting, for example, uh, on this one, which is uh, red versus green, I was getting blue there, right? So uh, I had to uh, uh, change, uh, make sure that all my cell representations were correct. Blue versus green, for example, I should have D3 and F3, and I got D3 and F3 here. So check to make sure everything stays right, and then once you have it so that it's working right, select your text like this, um, and then drag down and you apply that formatting to all of the text here. And it looks right now. So you have to use conditional formatting. Uh, how did I figure that out? I googled it and I found it, which is what I, I always tell you guys. I mean, you have this great resource called Google. Uh, and uh, if you can find a video on YouTube on it, it's even better. Uh, and I don't think I have ever not been able to find uh, instructions, either video or otherwise, on how to do something that I was trying to do uh, I have ever, I've never not been able to find what I needed. So let's just check some of these. Red's five. So when we do red versus blue, which is here, five, six, it should be blue. When we do red versus green, five, eight, it should be green. And then we do green versus blue, it should be green. So this is all looking right. Now I go over here. Here is where I have the, the statistics of, of red, blue, and green. And I say with red versus blue, I have blue wins 55 to 45. Now, how does that compare with this, with this analysis that I did up here? On blue versus red, I have blue should be 5 to 4 over red. That seems about right. Um, now, red versus green. Red versus green, I have red should win 5 to 4. Okay, that's working there too. And then I have green versus blue. I have green should win five to four. So all of these numbers here that are derived from our stochastic or probabilistic analysis. Sometimes when people do probability analysis, they call it Monte Carlo analysis. So my Monte Carlo analysis here is equal to my sort of straightforward uh, logical analysis over here. They're consistent with one another. And I have found over the years that whenever I do um, a, a analytical theoretical analysis, I frequently follow it up doing a computer simulation. If they don't agree, I look in and try to find the problem. And sometimes you're doing a theoretical analysis, you do a computer simulation, and you build something in hardware and you want all those three things to agree or there's a chance that you've made a mistake somewhere. And there the difficulty is trying to figure out if you've made a mistake, which one of those three categories the mistake happens to be. Uh, in this case, my analysis here uh, is consistent with my Monte Carlo simulation here and I could always make my simulation better by doing more cases. Now, in this file, I do a hundred cases on the simulation. Okay, that's what this is. 
Now it's going from 102, but it's not starting at uh, at one. Okay, so these are I'm doing 100 simulations here, and if you look at these numbers over here, these numbers should always add up to 100. Uh, 55 and 45, 39 and 61, 58 and 42, and they do. So if I want a more accurate uh, Monte Carlo simulation, I have to run more cases. 100 is giving me an indication of uh, whether it's probably right or not, but I really uh, you know, might want to do 1,000 or even 10,000, just to be sure. It depends on what level of certainty that I hope to get. So uh, with that, um, uh, this should be the end of our Carnival Dice uh, uh, experiments.